Welcome to another video by Pharos Technology. Today we're going to talk about mail merge and how simple it is to create a form letter and send out multiple copies of that letter with biographical text in it from an address book, for example. It's a quick, easy way to be able to address maybe invitations to a party or invitations to a wedding or other event. You can also use it for addressing the envelopes or even putting them on labels so that you can put, um, create labels to put onto envelopes. So what I'm going to show you then is I'll open up Word here. Alrighty, so here's a basic form letter. I'm inviting everybody to a party that I'm going to host and it's going to be an informal affair and we're going to talk about wonderful Word educational videos. It's bound to be extremely boring and everybody will probably decline my invitation. But anyway, it's a good example. So what I want to do first is to put today's date on it. Now, do I want to put today's date on it or do I want to put a field that whatever day I print this is the date that will be on the top of the letterhead? I think what I'll do is go ahead and insert a the date that will be updatable. And so that is controlled by this check mark here. Notice what I did is I went over here to date time. On the insert menu, I went over here to date time. This gives me the available formats for all the dates and times. So I can come down here and choose the one that says February 19th, 2022. I'm going to have it to update automatically, which means that with this checked, it will put in a field that gives me the current date. If I left that unchecked, it just put in today's date. Okay, so I'm going to click OK here. Now, the way that you know that this is a field and not just a date is when you highlight it here, your highlight appears in gray and in light gray and the field appears in dark gray. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and I want to put the name of the recipient that I'm going to send this to. So the first thing I have to do in my mail merge is go to this mailings tab up here and I want to select my recipients. Now I can do it one of three different ways. Okay, actually four different ways. I'll show you four. I can type the new list and bring up a dialog box here and I can then start typing all the information in. In fact, I can customize the fields so I only have to see the fields that I actually have data for like, you know, first name, last name, the city, the state, the zip code and such like that. If I click on add, I can add a custom name to the field for example. Uh, and if my data has the field name of just name instead of first and last in two separate fields, I can just put name in there instead of uh, first name and last name. So that's the way I can type a, a list in here. I prefer to use lists from other sources. I cancel that, select recipients here. I use an existing list, okay? So I have two sets of lists, lists set up and those are in a database of addresses or in an Excel spreadsheet of addresses. So let's do the database first. I'll click open. There is only one table in this database, so it already knew which table to select. But if I had multiple tables in there, it would then ask me and I would select it and then move on to this point. Now I can go ahead and insert a field and those are the fields that are within my data table. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert contact name. So I want to make sure that I have this highlighted and I'm going to insert contact name here. Click OK. OK. Now address slipped up to the next line. So I'm going to put it back down on this line. And here's address and I can insert the address. And now I'm going to hit enter again. And now I have city, state, and zip that I can put in. But I'm going to change to the spreadsheet and show you the difference there. I'm going to go ahead and select recipients again, use an existing list, and I'm going to choose the Excel spreadsheet and click open. Now this one asked me which sheet I want to use. Oddly enough, it asked me what sheet to use when it didn't ask me on the database when there was only one data table. Uh, here, there's only one tab, but it still asks me which tab I want to choose. 
and I'll click OK because it's just sheet one. Now, city here, I want to go ahead and put city. Now, by the way, I, I cheated a little bit. This is the same exact set of data in the database as it is in the spreadsheet. So it has the exact same titles. So I'm going to highlight state here. Then I'm going to insert the state field here. And for zip, I'm going to insert the postal code field. Okay, postal code. And now here I'm going to put in dear and contact name. I would like to invite you, yours truly, Richard D. Hansen. Okay, so how about we look at the finished product? So let's go over here to finish and merge. Now that we have all of our fields set up, if I click finish and merge, if I edit individual documents here, I can see, I'm going to have it look at all. I can see now it brings up another total window here. That's important to note. Now, if I ha see this now, I'm, I've got Howard Schneider here and I've got his address here. If I go then to the next page, let me scroll up here so I can go to the next page really easy. And the next one is Yoshi Latimer, City Center Plaza. And these are all fake names and addresses, by the way. And I could scroll down here and it'll keep on going until the end of my list. And so all of these are here. Now, if closing this one, when it asks me if I want to save it, if I save it now, I'm saving it as static documents. In other words, these aren't fields in this window anymore. This is the data from the database that is now embedded in these documents. And if I were to save it now, I'd just be saving the data and I wouldn't be saving any of the fields. So I'm going to go ahead and not save this in particular. If I go back up to finish and merge, I can print the documents and I, I can send them to the printer directly or I could have sent those pages to the document in the window that I just closed also. Either one. Okay. So the last way that you can put this together is go ahead and select recipients. You can choose it from your Outlook contacts. So if you're super diligent about filling in all the rest of the information in your Outlook contacts pages, so in other words, it's not just a name and an email address like mine is. Um, if you fill in the name, the email address, the name of the company and the address where they could be contacted and actually use it as a contact list that's a little bit more robust than just a, an email list, then you have adequate data in there to actually use it as a mail merge. And you can also uh, attach that one and then embed those fields just as I've shown you from Excel and from Access. And it'll look very similar. In fact, if I choose that and, and choose my profile here, it will uh, allow me to look at my context list. And it, you see that basically I've got just names in here with no, um, with no accompanying addresses and such. So for, for mail merge, mine wouldn't be appropriate, but if yours is filled out, it definitely can be pulled from uh, your Outlook list as well. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you'll join me for more in the future. Thanks. If you enjoyed the content that you saw today and would like to help me grow the channel, hover your mouse over my picture to the left and click on subscribe. There are also other videos showing on the screen that you might enjoy.